Let's just get so full of the Holy Ghost that the earth can actually taste and see that God is good. <laughs> God, just take all my theology, everything I've learned through the mouth of man and burn it up, God, in Jesus' name. I don't want it. Take everything that isn't of you, God. And if, if all my dead works, burn them up, God. I don't want them in Jesus' name. God, take every single ounce of bitterness, hatred, enmity, or whatever of the flesh towards other people. Forgive me and burn it up, God. Put it all through the cross, all through the blood of Jesus. God, I ask right now for the character of Christ to come and override all my character and put it all to death so that your character can come through me. Thank you, God, for the restoration of the image of God. It's not even really what God looks like. It's His nature. And you will look like Him in nature. Adam, you know, before the fall, he was covered in the glory. Moses, just sitting face to face with God, his whole face reflected God, and it scared, it scared, you know, today's standards of, you know, believers. We need that. We need the fear of the Lord. We need the fear of God manifesting through our very being so we don't have to tell people about God. God will teach them Himself just by us standing there being the body of Christ. This video is about nothing about me because I have nothing to give. Only what He can do through me is worth any eternal value. And it's the same for you. Your words, if they don't have the substance of Christ in them, it's, it's knowledge of good and evil. It's knowledge about good, it's the knowledge about evil. It, it's going to burn in those who speak the words of life. When Jesus knew, Jesus knew when He was speaking, He said, My words, are they are spirit and they are life. Because I only say what I hear my Father say, and I only do what I see my Father do. My Father does the works. We're made in the image of God. Let that image come forth through you. Burn up that fallen nature image, the image of the evil one who got cast down to earth and tries to throw his image over you, but that's not even you. The real you is fearless. The real you walks in authority as a king, he takes dominion over the earth, and he subdues it. The real you is the image of God. And it may not even be what you look like, but it will come to that. Those who take on the true image of God will manifest the attributes of God. They'll manifest the nature of God, the light of God. You're the light of the world, didn't he say that? Jesus is the light of the world, but you are the light of the world. If Jesus is coming through you, he is baptized into the Lord as one spirit with the Lord. When He appears in glory, so will you also appear with Him in glory. In glory. Because that's where you're changed into His image. Back to normal. Back to reality. Back to the image of God. Father, just release your peace now. The peace of God that passes all understanding, all theology, all the knowledge of good and evil. The peace of God. The kingdom of heaven is not just words, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. If you're not even in the Holy Spirit, you're not even in the kingdom of God. How do you expect your words to have spirit if you're not even in the Holy Spirit? The religious system has taught us unbelief. 
to fight the gifts of the Spirit. Healings of the devil, speaking in tongues is of the devil, all these things are spiritual or of the devil. And so that's just the knowledge of good and evil. Just too late. I've already experienced the Holy Ghost. I already know him as a person. I already know him, just not just in a theology in my brain, but he's actually a tangible spirit that lives in me, speaks to me, speaks through me, and comes to me, and comes through me. He's a person. The only reason you think of him as a substance, or, just, or not even a substance, just a, a concept, or just like the power source, is because you haven't gotten that close to him. You have, need to have an encounter with him. Father, I ask right now, even in this video, I don't care. God, let the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire come. The Holy Ghost and fire. Fire. Burn up everything in our lives that's not of God. Burn up everything in our lives that we even still call our lives. It's your life. It's your life, Holy Ghost. It's your life. It's your life. I give you my life. I give you this life that you've given to me, I give it back to you as a gift, as you've given me your life as a gift, the gift of God. <laughs> if you've known who it was speaking to you and the gift of God, you would have asked of me and I would have given you living water. The gift of not a gift from God, it's the gift of of God. <laughs> Do you want Him? I want Him more than any gift that He could ever give me. Him. I mean, I if I give my wife roses, she should probably be touched by that and thankful for her, but what she really wants is she'll put the roses aside and give a big hug and kiss to me. Thank you for the roses, God. Thank you. I just want to give a hug and a kiss to you, though. Thank God for the roses. <laughs> the roses are beautiful, Jesus. You know, but those roses only bloom in our garden of intimacy. The roses only bloom in the garden of our heart. You're the planting of the Lord. He waters you by His Spirit. In that intimate, cool place that Adam walked with God in Eden, it was a beautiful garden. It was God's garden. It was, it was Adam walking in God's heart. Because God loved that place. He watches over it. How often do we ever go there and just, God, yo, here's my busy schedule. Here's my time. what this video is for. I just want to spend time with God. <laughs> I push record. I don't even really care if he speaks revelation through me or if he just wants you to know that he wants love. He wants to love you and he wants you to love him back as a perfect circle, a perfect cycle of love, and that love cycle just permeating through and through, 
is how it was in the beginning. Before eternity came out of God, He was a perfect circle of love. Nothing hindering, nothing blocking, there's no hidden motives, everything was open. Love. It was a perfect circle of love. And then He wanted to bring mankind into that circle of love. He wanted to bring us into the circle of love. So He made us in His image. His image is unconditional love. Give it, receive it, give it, receive it, give it. Receive it. The highest gift. You know, prophesy, speak in tongues, you know, release revelation, speak all the mysteries of the world, but without experiencing the love of God to release. It's just a bunch of noise. How do you discern the difference between all the noise? Substance. The substance of someone who's been with the Lord is the you'll feel the love coming right through them. I don't want anything else. I don't want anything else. I don't want a ministry. I don't want I want God. Because if you have to like maintain all this stuff with you know, your earthly energy, you're going to wear yourself out. But if God wants to have a ministry to touch people, I'm available. God, this is your temple. Do what you want. <laughs> Do what you want, God. This is, it's just time to get real with God played church for so many thousands of years prophets saw in half for getting real with God and here you are in the comfort of your own home and you can get real with God right now and just say God I don't care who's around me I don't care what is what is man what can man do to me well man can cut you in half saw you in half you know in Canada and the US if you're listening to it at this time when I made this video the persecution is not even persecution it's just a bunch of angry demons manifesting through people's souls they don't shoot you and cut your head off they do but <laughs> it's rare so why not give everything to God now manifest God to those people so they won't cut your head off <laughs> they cannot cut your true head off whatever I don't really care my life is not my own anyway you know it's all about him it's all about him if it was about me I failed you all <laughs> And everything I say on this camera, you too. If it's about you, you're failing us. If it's all about you and your ministry and how your structure and how to make money, you failed. You failed. It's about God coming through you. Freely you have received, freely give. Give God. Give the gift of God. Don't be fearful. So many people idolize money. God, Jesus made a thief his banker. He trusted his father. Jesus trusted the father with his finances. So he's like, okay, well, let's give all the money to the thief. Because <laughs> he knows what he's doing. He doesn't think like a natural beast nature tries to hoard everything. <sighs> we love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. Oh, great Holy Spirit, just come more. Come more. Just come and fill every vessel, God. Fill my very being. Fill my atmosphere, God. Fill my house. Fill the natural realm. God, fill this whole block. <sighs>
with the presence of God. Fill this place, God. Fill this place. And fill this place with the manifest presence of God. You want revival? Release the reviver. Don't hold him behind in your gates of fear and opinions of man. Release him through yourself. Your heart, blessed are the pure in heart. They'll see God <laughs> and ask for wisdom. He's the key. He'll give you keys to unlock or she. I don't even know who. Wisdom's the spirit. <laughs> wisdom. You know, Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. You know, <laughs> wisdom will give you understanding. With all you're getting, get understanding. And understanding will give you the keys to unlock the kingdom, to release God, our home, the kingdom of heaven, into this realm for people to experience the gift of God, <laughs> Him. So just take a few minutes right now and just receive the presence of God. I can feel Him. I can, I can feel Him. If you can't feel God, say, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over my brains, my heart, my body, my soul, my spirit. I want to feel God. David said, my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. The living God. He's not just up there in outer space. He's living Alive, just like me, just like you, just like the people you see. Like it's like you can hear my voice speaking to you right now. God can speak to you right now. If I could, if I was right beside you in person, I could touch your forehead. You'd feel my hand touching you. God can touch your spirit. God is spirit. Those who worship Him, worship Him in the Spirit and in truth. That means the Holy Ghost and in Christ Jesus. Worshiping the Father. Giving everything to the Father. So that everything of the Father, your man can come through you. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though, uh, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake and swell thereof? Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come and behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth spear in, un, in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still and know that I am God. In other words, shh. All the distractions in your soul. God, I have these problems. God, I have a... shh. God, if I could just, if I could just do this, if I could just do that. Shh. you God just want you God
flesh cry out for the living God. I just don't want uh, I just don't want to know about God. Oh, that would suck. I'm in you. You get to know God. <laughs> His name is Jesus. His name is Holy Spirit. His name is Abba Father. God. <laughs> the spirit why are you crying why are you so emotional you you ever just love someone so much that your body loses like control <laughs> I'm crying because I love God that's how I express my love to God I just I'm hungry for him. I want I feel him already, but I want the, I want his voice. I want him to speak to me. I want to see his face again. I've seen his face in the mirror. I've seen him. I've seen him in parabolic visions. I've seen him in visions where he's right there. He, he's, I'm pointing at him and like he's the one I want. And I can feel his love. I've sat with him on the throne holding his arm as he just permeated unconditional love to the people that I didn't have unconditional love to. He doesn't change. He changes us. Love changes. Love covers a multitude of sins. That's who God is. So you know what, I, I cry a lot because you know my heart and flesh cry out for the living God. It's biblical. <laughs> I don't know why they don't put that in the theological cemetery. It's actually normal to cry in the presence of God because it's in the Bible. Okay, praise the Lord. All right. Um, I have no other. I have no agenda here. So let's just let's just drink the living water. Father, I thank you for your word. I come to you. I speak to the rock. Rock, give forth those living waters to all who are thirsty. Give forth your living waters, God. <laughs> My hair. <laughs> Oh Shaka, God, we just give you, we just give you, <laughs> we give you thanks, we give you everything. God, I want to thank you that I can hold a Bible in my hand and read it when some people don't even ha have a clue that you exist. God, I thank you for the shirt on my back, for I've seen pictures on the internet where people don't even have clothes. God, I thank you for the water that I drink. The natural water that gives nourishment to my body and quenches my thirst and some don't even have clean water. I thank you for the spiritual water that you give me because some people don't even know you exist. Thank you, Father, for technology. Thank you for giving me a Blackberry playbook to record videos. <laughs> I paid $50 for it. You don't have to be rich. The greatest riches is God. If God can't trust us with earthly wealth, how is He going to tr trust us with true riches? You know what the true riches are? His children. Ministering to them. True riches are Him releasing brand new anointings on your life. True riches is having the glory manifest out through you. True riches come from the kingdom of heaven. Natural riches, it's all good. I love it. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this nice Bible with gold trim on it. It's really, really, really nice. I thank you, Father, for it. And I thank you even for my hair, even though it's crooked. It's a little bit rebellious at times, but that's fine. 
I have hair. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for hair. Thank you. I have, I have eyes that I can actually see the beauty on the earth, the oceans, the streams, the people, Father. Thank you. Thank you for prophetic vision where I can actually see you in the spirit realm when you purify my heart. I can see the kingdom realm, God. Thank you for vision dreams, spiritual understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for counsel. Thank you for the spirit of might to break every, sin, every hindrance that blocks me from you and blocking other people from you. We can bow, just break right through it. Thank you for the spirit of the fear of the Lord to show how awesome and how merciful you are teaching us to walk in the exact same character that you are walking in. Uh, hallelujah. You know, Holy Spirit is my best friend. He's the only one who never condemns me. <laughs> He's never condemned me, ever. He's convicted me. I'll feel like a check, ooh, something's wrong there, and I'll, you know, okay, okay, and I've rebelled sometimes, and, ooh, I don't even want to talk about that. Don't ever grieve the Holy Spirit. You don't want to, you don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, that, that's so painful, like, Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you, it feels really bad because he's your best friend. He's the one who loves you the most. He's the one, he just, he looks after you. He fills you. He rescues you. And when you grieve him, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's like, it's like if you have a loved one and you hurt them. It hurt. It hurts to know that you hurt your loved one, because you could have avoided it. One time, I was sitting on a bus. I don't even want to talk about it. I have to. I was sitting on a bus, and um, I looked over. I saw a street person, and I went into a, a vision. And I was getting a lot of visions at this time in this season of my life. And I saw myself in the vision. I was. I, was, I, I bought this man some slices of pizza and I think I gave him a couple bucks and I was just talking to him about Jesus. And I felt the peace of God on the bus. I'm like, oh, so beautiful. And then <laughs> just raveled up. And then, uh, you know, a couple seconds later, there's the guy. And, you know, I saw the vision. But I had my own will. I wanted to go buy, uh, not even buy a guitar. I wanted to go play guitars at a store, a guitar store. And so I got off, I got off the bus and I'm like, well, there's the guy, but, you know, was that even God? You know, like, I don't know, man. And then I was like, I'm just going to go play guitar, whatever. You know, I just kind of ignored it, and I went to go play guitar. And even, I, I kept feeling grieved. I'm like, why am I so grieved? I don't understand. Why do I feel so bad? And the stronger I would stay in the store playing the guitar, the stronger I'd feel grieved. And I've already asked Holy Spirit to forgive me, and He has, but I'm just telling you... And I'm, I'm playing this guitar, and uh, the guitar even dropped, and I broke it, you know. They said, it's okay, it's okay, you know, just get out of here kind of thing. And I don't know, it was like a $300 guitar, and, and so I left, I left the store, and uh, I kept feeling grieved and went to a prayer meeting that night. I was so grieved that I became angry and bitter inside because I didn't understand. I thought it was me. Why am I so grieved? And I realized I grieved the Holy Spirit because I didn't listen to what he said. That He wanted that man to hear about Jesus. He wanted that man to be fed, not just with natural food, but be fed in his spirit, man. I went looking for that man for days. Never found him. There's a man in hell because of me. That that's on my shoulders for the rest of my life. Holy Spirit warned me. He 
was grieved because now it's just like, what if that person was you? And I didn't listen to God. I had my own way. I wanted to go play guitar. And now somebody is in hell because I didn't listen to God. Because I grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Ghost. Don't. It's not, it's never worth it. This temporary pleasure, it's not even worth it. Eternity. So my soul, I, I ask God to forgive me and you know, he, he's my best friend, of course he's going to forgive me, but that is a hard lesson to learn. So every chance you get when Holy Spirit speaks to you, just obey, obey. You don't want to, you don't want to live with that on, you, you know, obviously yeah, I don't feel condemnation anymore, but I have a daughter, I have a wife, and I love them, and I couldn't imagine one of them being in hell because of me not telling them or manifesting the true kingdom of heaven to them. Anyways, enough of that. Don't grieve the Holy Ghost, okay? Walk with Him and obey. Because <laughs> it always works out for your benefit when you obey the Holy Ghost. You want to get promoted? Obey the Holy Ghost. If you don't know who the Holy Spirit is, get to know who God is. He is love. He's peace. He's joy. Unspeakable. Full of glory. You can't even describe it. You can only manifest it. And people who are hungry for God, well, they'll catch Him. They'll catch Him and like, whoa, there's something here that's beyond me. And, and yeah, it lets God. Do you want Him in your heart? And then they make a choice. Other times the Holy Spirit's used me like, whatever. I mean, if God's, you know, I missed it. Like, I'm not this super amazing person. I can't even... I suck at talking. But I love God. <laughs> you know? I, people use big words and stuff like that. And I had to Google that. 11 words to make you smarter. And I created this... I created this little... <laughs> I can't even remember how, how it goes, but it was I used 11 really big words and I made this Facebook post. It was so funny. I don't even think anybody liked it because it was just like, what the heck? They didn't even understand it. You know, I'd rather just be like this child with like a great whatever education and who just loves God. Whatever. There's no... I don't care about no big ministry or no little ministry. I love God, and whoever comes around me, that's let's 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 get the kingdom. Like let's get into the kingdom. Let's get into the realm of the glory. You know, <laughs> who cares about ministries? You know, did Adam have a ministry? It was like his job was like, okay, hang out with God. Let's name the animals, Dad. <laughs> Dad, let's name let's name the animals. So God takes him, you know, God brings in the animals or whatever. And then Hebrew, you know, and you know, in Hebrew culture, uh, or whatever, the name is its nature. You know, that's why, you know, when Gideon or whatever, their his parents, was it Gideon? I don't even remember. Somebody's parents, uh, they were asking for the name of this 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 uh, this angel or whatever that went up in the fire, and they like they asked for his name. He's like, why do you ask for my name? It's too wonderful for you to understand or something like that. I can't remember. It's in one of the books of the Old Testament. Now I'm getting really bit plastered. <laughs> Jesus. But I was going to say that, to say this about the Adam and the animals. Adam was made in the image of God. Okay? What was the first thing God did? Let's read the Bible. Have a little Bible study in the glory. In the beginning, God created... It's the law of first mentions. In the beginning, God created. So what's the first nature of God? Creator. God made man in His image. God made man a little creator. We are to create. In a way, we create atmospheres through our words. 
because you know God created the worlds with his words he framed them up he spoke them and when he brought the animals to Adam God, Adam was partaking in the nature of God he was declaring the nature of those animals every time he spoke it it wasn't just like oh cow zebra he was like prophesying that it's nature if it's according to Hebrew because the name is its nature that's why God changes the names no longer will you be Abram but your name shall be Abraham because you'll be a father of nations you know your name is no longer Sarai but Sarah or whatever you know what I mean uh, he, God was changing names to match their nature and uh, that's, that's what Adam did he was just declaring the names prophesying the natures over the animals because the name is the nature you know, what's his face? Uh, Jacob, he's, he was named that deceiver. He got changed to Israel. So, which is uh, something about peace or something. I don't even know. I'm not, I'm not very smart. Thank God. That helps me. <laughs> that helps me. Because if I was like, really smart, I'd have to like, uh, I would probably depend on my, my intellect. You know, but I depend on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I'll sit on a verse. I'll, I'll sit. Th- I'm like, I'm not like this. Does not make sense, God. I'm like, and He never once said, "Well, it's because you're reading the King James, son. You gotta get yourself a more updated Bible." <laughs> but my mama told me to read this Bible. She said it was the best, so I just took her word and I started reading it. I, but I read other Bibles too. But I'd sit there, like for instance, this one. Uh, everyone, er, everybody quotes it. It's Galatians 2 verse 20. And then uh, I was like, well, what does it really, 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 really mean? Like, God, I don't... And one day I was reading it and I just sat there, like, just staring at it. Reading it over and over and over and over and over and over again until it said, Galatians 2 20. Let me read it to you. See if you guys capture this. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And then it exploded, like just boom! I don't live by faith in God, although I do. It says right here, I live by the faith of the Son of God. His faith holds the whole universe together. The faith of the Son of God, like he doesn't doubt his words. When he speaks, if he ever doubted, I would disintegrate. This video would just go, everything would just ravel up into nothing. He doubted his word. So how could it be? But I live by the faith of the Son of God. I also live in faith to Him, but it's His faith coming to me. It's His faith. But even further than that, there's there's layers to revelation. I live by the faith of the Son of God. His faith is what keeps my body here. His faith is what holds the universe in rotation and everything like functioning the way it should be. It's His faith. God has so much faith, it's bigger than the earth, the universe, the galaxy, the multiverse, whatever, how far it goes, heaven, the invisible realm, the angels, even eternity, and like in that circle of love, back to God. His his faith, His faith is so powerful, nothing can stop it. God's faith is stronger than than death. <laughs> God's faith. I know I just saw that and I was just so blown away that wow. Everything is held together by God's faith, by the faith of the Son of God. Not only held together, but it's actually He's the one who's holding me here. He's holding me in Christ by His faith. It must have took even faith to go to the cross, to die, to see past the death to rise again and that we would rise up in him and sit with him in heavenly places far above all principalities powers dominions or anything that could try to 
hurt us. So many people think that like the safe, you know, they're safe in their denomination because Grandpa or Mama Lisa, Daddy Tom was a Christian. I'm a, I'm good too. You know, no. I heard someone say God doesn't have any grandchildren. <laughs> God has sons. You know, and if you're a daughter, you're still a son because you're in the son. <laughs> You know, you're the bride of Christ. I'm the bride. Whatever. Fire of my life. I want it. I want the fire of God in my life that I've given to Him. Who can dwell with a consuming fire? Well, who wants to stay there burning with Him? Do you want to stay there or do you just want to go do your own thing? Do you want to go build yourself a ministry and make some money? <laughs> Why does he keep talking about that? Because I see it everywhere. And I don't like it. I want nothing to do with that. I want everything to do with God. Whatever God wants to do. Jesus himself, he saw the people at the temple. They were, they were standing there with their tables, right? You know, selling doves, selling the Holy Spirit, selling doves. You know, and he, and he, 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 he starts kicking tables over. He had a whip or something, I think. And he, he trashed the place. He says, why are you making my father's house uh, a den of merchandise or something like that? My father's house is to be a house of prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is intimacy. Feeling God and letting God come through you. Prayer is your relationship with God. That's all prayer is. It's not just begging God for stuff. If that's your relationship, well, yeah, okay, we start there. You know, it's like you start praying for other people too. God, just break that off of them. Ugh. Or even just command it. Just loose. Okay, I'm getting all, I'm getting all uh, woozy. <laughs> Let's have a drink in the gospel. If you need a scripture, go to Isaiah 55 while I'm drinking. Oh, that's a spiritual river. That's spiritual wine. Jesus, I mean, uh, what was that guy? The guy in the Bible rebuked. I think it was God. <laughs> God rebuked. Uh, I believe it was the Israelites. He said, if you would have opened your mouth, I would have given you, like, I would have filled it with honey from the rock. You know what honey is? Come on. We sing about it, don't we? Your name is like honey. Okay. Honey from the rock is a revelation. Jesus is the rock. The rock is a revelation. You can't kill Goliath with a brick. You have to use a stone because that's what God gives. God makes stones. Man makes bricks. Just David would have died if you threw a brick at Goliath because Goliath would have just looked at it and just cut his head off. Okay? You got to use God's tools. God makes rocks, stones, all right? And we're built up in a spiritual house, a spiritual house of stones, not bricks. You know, that's that's fine. That keeps the, It keeps the... Keeps the rain out, and you can go in there, and you can worship God in Christ. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not persecuting buildings. <laughs> Holy Spirit. Oh, shaka. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit. Oh, I totally lost my train of thought. I don't care anymore. Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, yes, there you are. Father, I thank you. Jesus, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you for sending us. <laughs> Holy shaka. I lost my train of thought on that last um, little bunny rabbit trail. But I will tell you this. All these people come up to me. And, well, not all these people. A lot of people come up to me. And they all like, what are you, what are you a prophet? Or are you an evangelist? Are you a teacher? Are you an apostle? Are you a son of God? Are you a Huyus? Are you a... <laughs> 
<laughs> they got all these terms. And uh, God told me what I was, you know. Cause it, and, and, then, and then I went and searched it out, and he, then he rebuked me with the verse. <laughs> so I'm like, God, I don't know how to do this. You say I'm this, and I kind of, oh, I was getting all stressed out, trying to use the knowledge of good and evil to fulfill my calling. You know, information about something without actually experiencing it. So I was kind of frustrated without the experience of what I thought I was supposed to be doing. So this is what God said to me. I'm like, God, what's my calling? You say it's this. People laid their hands on me and it dating me as this. What is my calling? How do I do this? And then God gave me the first... I ran out of hands. The first seven to eight words. I was reading this Bible. Not this very Bible, but the King James at the time. And he said, this is your calling. And when he had called unto him his... That's your calling. It's uh, Matthew chapter 10, the first seven or eight words, whatever translation you are using. And when he had called unto him his, you're called to him. But my office, I'm the prophet, I got a prophet. You're called to him. You're called to die. And he'll raise you up into him. And then He becomes the Word of the Lord through you. It's not you doing the prophesying. It's Him speaking through your mouth. Speaking not even through your mouth. Through your life. Your life is a prophecy. No, you're, the things you do, the words you speak, the atmosphere you carry is a prophecy if you want to be a prophet. Teacher. God, how do I teach you? Well, you read the Bible all, the, all day long and you, mat, you like meditate on the Word of God day and night, but that still doesn't make you a teacher. When you start getting revelation from heaven and wisdom and understanding how to break it down and to make manna cakes for people, manna, I'm the manna that came down from heaven, there he is again. It's all about him. You just take Jesus and you feed him to people. The Israelites, they made these manna cakes in the wilderness, you know, when the manna came down. And uh, they, they, they dressed it differently, you know. It's, that's like us. We just take our revelation and then we just kind of like, you, you know, we build around it. There's no other foundation can anyone build but that is built by Christ. The apostles build upon Him, you know. you got If there's no substance of Christ, Jesus, it's, it's just, it's, it's going to fall. It's not built on the rock. It's built on bricks. It's built on sand. Sand is symbolic of time. You know, whatever. Sand's time. But you want to build upon the rock. Rock is revelation. Who do people say that I am? Peter. <laughs> uh, you're the Christ. The son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonas, or whatever his name is, for flesh and blood did not reveal revelation. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And basically, after that, he was, he, beca be, he changed his name to uh, uh, to, to Petra, Peter, or whatever, which means rock, revelation. He said, "Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church." It wasn't upon Peter's name. It was upon the revelation from the Father. It's upon the revelation that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is that cornerstone. You build upon that stone. So don't try throwing bricks at Goliath. You're just going to get yourself killed. <laughs> Throw some stones at him, man. Throw some cornerstone, like some living stones. Yeah. Hallelujah. Shaka. And when he had called unto him his, there's your calling. Some of you may be called to be kings. Some of you may be called to be lords, king of kings, lord of lords, priests, you know, apostles, prophets, teachers, whatever. You're called to him. When he when you're in the fullness of him, all these things, these, these things just it's it's like it's not even about you. It's about him coming through you as the teacher. He's teaching through you. It's about him 
coming through you, speaking through you, living through you as a prophet, as a sign and a wonder. It's about Him. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. He's the evangelist in you. Open your mouth and speak the words of salvation and they will come. But it's more than that. Because He said, disciple the nations. Not just disciple people on the street that you bring in. You know, it's more the pastor. The pastor will always lead the sheep to still waters. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, He leads him beside still water. God will lead you beside still waters, peaceful, restful areas where you can enjoy the manifest presence of God, where you can drink the living waters. So all these different things. Lord is just, you know, executing authority like a king. Um, you know, you, you bow to the king of kings and you receive his directions and you go out and you perform it. And um, you know, once you get close enough to God, he will give you assignments. He'll give you directions. And um, you can screw up at times and, and it hurts. It really hurts. It hurts God more than it hurts you. I can guarantee that through experience. So don't grieve the Holy Ghost. Do whatever he says, and you're going to rejoice for eternity in heaven for obeying God. Okay? So, there we go. Okay, your calling, it's fine if you want to be you know, the prophet or whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever, all those things are irrelevant to me. Is the substance of Christ coming through your words? It's the substance of Christ coming through the manifestation of what you're building, Mr. Apostle? Or is it... <laughs> you know, Apostle just means sent one. It means, you know, Jesus sent you. So, like, you know, if Jesus sends you to a grocery store to go tell someone about Jesus, maybe you're an apostle to the grocery store, but that was about it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have all that theology to go through, so I don't, I don't even really care. So, you know... My theology is off. Go to your theologian. He'll correct you and whatever. <laughs> correct me. I don't even care because I, if there's no spirit on his words, I'll just like... It'll just burn right in front of me. Who can dwell with consuming fire. That's where I want to dwell. I'm going to dwell with the consuming fire of God until all my life is burnt up. So I don't even call it my life anymore. <laughs> That's when you know your life's burnt up. You, know, you, you just don't even say, Oh, my life. <laughs> you know, oh my, <laughs> my life. <laughs> it's like, whoa, God's coming out here. <laughs> it's all, all you're, you're so focused on God that you forget that you even have your own life. Moses was like, <laughs> you know, when the old people sinned, you know, they were, uh, I can't remember, they're worshiping idols or something like that. And can you say this? You're, you're talking to God. He's like, God, if, if, you, if you're not going to forgive them, blot me out of the, your book. Blot me out. Take me out of your book, God. If you're going to take them out, take me out. That is selfless. Jesus even went so far as to... For the wickedest, most vilest person that hates you died for them for, to, for them to experience the love that you've experienced. And if you've not experienced yet that love, I told you what to do. Put your hand on your forehead. I plead the blood of Jesus. Put your hand on your heart. I plead the blood of Jesus in my body, soul, and spirit. God, I want to feel you. I, I want my heart and my flesh to pant for you, the living God. I want to feel and experience the tree of life. You can't really feel the knowledge of good and evil because it's just knowledge in your brain. You feel it in your brain. Get all puffed up. Even the good in the knowledge of good is death. Because there's no spirit on it. The tree of life is all life. It's experience. It's circle. It all goes back. It's all going back to what it was perfect circle of love. Why do, you think the, why do you think the planets are round? You know, Earth is made in the image of Heaven and we're made in the image of God. Hallelujah. Take a drink break. 
Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, glory. God, I just take your word right now. I just, I just fill it with my own. Fill me, God. Don't be drunk with wine. But be full of the Holy Ghost. Because he's the living wine. <laughs> the God kind. He'll stop the whining. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to the Bible the other day. I have one of those uh, audio Bibles. And uh, it was, me and my wife were laughing because, man, everybody was whining. Moses, there's no water. Moses, there's now no. Moses, you brought us out to die. Moses, Moses, Moses. Everyone's just complaining. It's like, man, are we really like that? Oh my gosh. So, I, you know, I think I'm going to start from today to at least thank God for 10 things. First thing in the morning. Let's do it right now. You do your own thankful things. I'm going to do mine. Uh, God, I thank you right now for the gift of God. I thank you, God, for the gift of the Holy Ghost and power. God, I thank you for a roof over my head. I thank you for all those people who are just open to you and discipling me in the Spirit, God. Thank you for my friends. And if I don't have any friends, <laughs> I thank you for the friends that are coming, God. I thank you for the heavenly cloud of witnesses all around me, God. Thank you for Jesus shedding his blood so my sins can be forgiven and I can come right into heaven as your child God thank you for the angels that surround me that count round about me because I fear the Lord thank you Father God for technology thank you for even primitive technology called paper and tree the printing press now I can have a Bible in my hand I can read this and I can step through the words right into the kingdom of heaven and experience the living God I don't have to wait till I die because I've already died and risen in Christ Christ. I don't have to wait. I can experience God right now, right here, right in my spirit, man, right in my heart. Just all of you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for forgiving me for grieving the Holy Spirit. Thank you for forgiving me and loving me back into my position of just sitting in you, resting in you. Nothing to do with all my good works and the, my, all my efforts, uh, my failures, my triumphs, my my uh, all this stuff, God, I just give it to you. And I thank you that I am a free spirit to has that has access to my Father in heaven. The kingdom of God within you breaks all the stuff with that, that tries to stop the heavens around you from being open. The kingdom of God is within you. Now let the kingdom come out through you so that it can manifest the kingdom of heaven around you. How do you do that? You might ask. Surrender. First love gate. You know, I drink. I, by faith, the Bible says, come to the river. God has a river of pleasure. Pleasure. Isaiah 55. You know, Jesus breathed on his say He said, receive the Holy Ghost. And he goes... Receive the Holy Ghost. That was before he even died and rose again. God is the very heir. He's the Ruach within the temple of the Holy Ghost. Which is you. If you've received Christ. If you haven't received Christ, let's do it right now. God, come into my life. I give my life to you. Forgive me for my sins. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. I take my life and I give it to you. And I take your life that you've given for me. And I receive you now. I receive you now. You are my Savior. You are my King, my Lord, my Savior, my Healer, my Deliverer, my Master. You are my everything, God. I belong to you. Lord Jesus Christ. Now fill me with the Holy Spirit and power so I can walk this walk and not just have a bunch of talk. I just receive the Holy Spirit. Right in the heart. Right in the heart. 
in the heart. I break all pride. I break all pride now in the name of Jesus. You might think, well, there's people around me. I can't do that prayer. <laughs> I just see pride. I just cut it. It doesn't matter what people think. It matters what he thinks. Because you're going to be with him forever. People's opinions change. <laughs> when, when Paul got stuck on an island, they were like, uh, the people were saying, uh, it's, it's a good thing he's here because like he's a criminal and he's getting, you know, like a, <laughs> whatever, a snake jumped on him and bit him. And I can't even talk right now. Holy Spirit, help me. <laughs> Whatever. They were basically they were condemning him because he got he he got what he got he got what he deserved justfully because he was a criminal and blah blah blah. So they're condemning him, and then he sh he shook off the snake. It jumped out of the fire. And he just shook it off, you know. And then um, later on, when they saw that he didn't fall down and die, it's like he's a god, you know. So people's opinions will, will change constantly on you. You gotta keep forgiving them. One minute they'll think you're a devil and condemn you. The next minute they'll think you're God and worship you. You just gotta throw all that junk off and just look to Him. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. The more time you spend with Him, the greater your faith will increase because it's not even really your faith, it's just His face, com His face coming through you. His face coming through you. His person coming through you. His fire coming through you. His anointing, glory, manifestation of His reality, Kingdom of God coming through you into the Kingdom of this earth. Just enjoy God. <laughs> And don't, you know, you might try to get into dead works, doing stuff for God, apart from God, which is usually the path that most of us have taken, who've been discipled in religion, but I'll tell you, the, the quickest key, stop. Stop everything you're doing, and then, you know, just... Get to know the Holy Spirit. Get to know Jesus. Get to know the Father. Get to know the anointing. Get to know God in the Spirit because He's Spirit. And He'll speak to you spirit to spirit. He'll speak to you in dreams, visions, through impressions. Like, I'm not even going to limit it. Like, open the Bible and just go through this as much as you can. But don't even just read it like a newspaper. Say, God, your Spirit, speak to me through this book by your Spirit. Because this was inspired by spiritual words. This was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And men who were spiritual wrote it down, interpreted it like, so I want the Spirit, what you spoke in this book, to come into my spirit so I can reflect that reality. And God will answer your prayers. God is always there. He's omnipresent. He's there right now with you. <laughs> He's here right now with me. Like God, the heaven of heavens cannot contain God. So don't think that you can either. He's bigger than the walls of the church. He's bigger than your unbelief. And he's bigger than mine. He's supreme. He's awesome. Love, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. Heart and flesh cry out for the living God. Nothing wrong with crying. Nothing wrong with rejoicing in the joy of the Lord. There's nothing wrong with being passionate for God. There's something wrong if you're not passionate for God. Because God is passionate. If He wasn't passionate, He wouldn't have went to the cross. <laughs> My throat got thirsty from all that talking. <clears throat> yeah, God is very passionate. Jesus is really passionate. The Holy Spirit, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, Father, thank you for this uh, wonderful day. Thank you for the glory. Thank you for your peace. 
Jesus, I just love you. I just love you. I love your presence, God. I love the peace that you release. Oh, thank you for touching our souls. Thank you for touching our spirit, man. Thank you for touching our flesh, our body, <laughs> our biological life. <laughs> yeah, everyone who needs healing, God, I just stretch forth my hand right now. This is your hand, God. I just release the healing power of God to touch every single sickness and infirmity. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Every single spirit of infirmity be gone now in the name of Jesus and you cannot return to that body anymore. And I plead the blood of Jesus, which makes an atonement for over all these people, God, right now in the name of Jesus. The power of God is touching you. The power of God is touching you. I'm just going to hold my hand here. I feel heated in it right now. So, Father, thank you. All the glory goes to you, God. You're the healer, not me. I'm just your vessel. I'm your. I'm, I'm that dead guy who is <laughs> with, the, with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh Jesus, release that power now. Thank you, Father. I give you. <laughs> wow, I'm getting really blasted here. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Power, 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 power of the Lord is present to heal. So heal them all. Heal them all. Heal them, Father. From the crown of the head, the soles of the feet, body, soul, spirit, all the wounds in the soul, where you've been wounded and, and uh, where you've been hit, where you've, been, where you've had loss, God, I just ask you to fill those areas right now. Pour in the wine for cleansing, Father, in the name of Jesus. Pour in the oil. Pour in the oil and the wine. Oil of gladness, joy. Joy comes in the morning. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're going to blow my nose. Thank you, Father. Just release that power. Wow. Yeah, just keep receiving from the Lord. God is good. He is healer. Like, it's in the book, okay? <laughs> King. Father, if any of us have sat on that throne, tried to replace you, we just step off. And we just give you your rightful place as, thro as the throne in our hearts, in our minds, in our soul, in our bodies, in our spirit. You are King. Ah, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you've received Christ, you know. It's all about Him. Um, God knows what He's doing. And uh, you can trust your life in His life because He's the one who made all life. He's the creator of all things. You know, heaven and earth. <laughs> you know, God was in the realm of God and then He created, like eternity came out of Him and then He stepped into eternity and then He created the invisible realm and then He stepped into the invisible realm and created the angels and all that stuff like that and then he then he stepped into the he created the natural realm which is the earth and, and the stars and the sun and then he actually stepped into that and, and then like you know and he will in a way he did uh he created adam's body from the dust of the earth and he stepped in he breathed into adam and he stepped into adam by the spirit of god so god is bigger than you can imagine. He's bigger than the opinions of men. He's bigger than any of any natural thing you can think about. The universe, the heavens, the invisible realm, eternity. He's bigger than eternity. It's true. Eternity came out of him. He always was. The reason you can't understand it is because you're natural, but your spirit knows. Wow, you feel that? Let's just enjoy him. Oh, Jesus, shut up.
like this. Some of you guys just need to plug into the Lord and just like he'll it's like powering a light bulb, you know, and just he'll light you up. Some of you have been just like just disconnected from God. Just, <laughs> just plug right in and there boom, there comes the power again. Some of you lost your vision and <laughs> just because you just gotta get plugged back into the Lord. It's a your vision is to bring vision to others. It's not even your vision. It's God's vision through you to bring provision for those around you. You know, Moses is, you know, his vision was uh, to bring, <laughs> Moses' vision was to bring all these people, slaves, out of Egypt. It was God's vision. It was God's provision. And he just chose Moses, you know? Just like God chooses you and your sphere of influence. He might not know who, who to talk to or what to do or, you know, just talk to your, your friends, your family members, or don't even do any. You know what? Just get close to God. He'll give you the, he'll give you, he'll put, um, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart will be His desires planted in you so and He'll equip you to fulfill them. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Jesus. But I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Jesus. You know when Jesus ministered? I don't know how he did it, man. With all those thousands of people. Yeah, man. You ever think about it? He must have had to go to the bathroom too. You know. I don't think about stuff like that, but you know, you gotta go to the bathroom. You gotta go to the bathroom. I'm not a real professional talker or anything. Just uh, wanted to go to the bathroom. Oh, Father, I thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day, God. I just want to get so full of the Holy Ghost that it actually it's just like a, you're just like a cloud just surrounding me. Just that electric cloud, Father, just a honey glory cloud, whatever you choose, whatever form you want to take, God. I just receive you, Father. I just receive your spirit right now, right now. receive you father I just see like the fountain just being overflowed Jesus just pour, he's the fountain of life Jesus says I'm the fountain of life whoever's thirsty come and drink come and drink from the fountain of life come 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 and drink he's the fountain of life his waters bring life his, his water is life his water is spirit and it's life Thank you for that water, God. I just take my cup and I just drink that, God. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Oh, keep filling. 
Maybe God is one more. I don't care. Wow. Well, the more I drink, the more. Thank you, Father God. <laughs> I just see this massive fountain is just being poured out for whoever's thirsty. <laughs> wow, Shanta Kira Bakere. Thank you, Father. Yeah, just give them some too. Boof. He said, whoever's thirsty. <laughs> did you think did you think you have to pray in tongues for an hour or what? <laughs> Let's get your cup. I don't know. Oh, you guys can't see it. That's right. There's this there's a big fountain here. <laughs> I'm just holding my I was just holding my cup up to the fountain and just drinking. And I can see Jesus, just it's just coming right out of him. Oh yeah, I prayed that earlier, didn't I? I said, Rock, give forth your waters. That's okay, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for answering your prayers. I mean, my prayer. <laughs> oh, man. See? Oh man, I love the simplicity of the gospel. If you want to, if you don't know what I'm doing, I'm just having a drink. I, I, in the spirit, I'm seeing like this massive water fountain, and uh, and I'm just taking my cup and I'm just just filling it up and drinking it. I'm engaging my body, my spirit, and my soul into what I see in the spirit realm. It's just, it's just God saying, hey, yeah, I'm the living waters, drink of me. You know, just drink, 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 drink. Drink as much as you want, as often as you want. The living water. <laughs> if you, if this, if this kind of offends you or if you just like don't have a grid for it, you need a scripture. Drink. Draw from the wells of salvation. Google it. Jesus is our salvation. Jesus is the well. Come on, just take your cup and dip it right in your belly and just right over that well of salvation. It may look foolish to the natural mind because the, the spiritual things are foolishness to the natural mind or the carnal man or whatever. But it doesn't matter because we're not here to please the natural man. I'm here to get, you know, jacked up on God, you know. I'm here to, to drink God. <laughs> he said be full of the Holy Ghost. This is just one, one way that I get full of the Holy Ghost. I drink. I just take my cup, you know, you know, whatever, just by faith to say, God, I'm taking this cup. I'm going to dip it in the river of life right now. I just dip it right now and I just drink by faith. Yeah. And if that doesn't work for you, just go pray in tongues for an hour. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. I pray in tongues a lot. I used to do it like all the way to work, all the way home, you know, at work. Just shakana makere, okay? If you don't have the gift of tongues, just open up the Bible and just just pray the prayers. You know, just pray. Look for look through the Bible. Like there's so many things you can do just to get it. the the goal in all of this is to meet the Holy Ghost and experience Him. Because the kingdom of heaven is not word only, but it's demonstrations of the Spirit and power. It's demonstration of the Spirit of God. And you can't demonstrate the Spirit if you don't know Him. So you need to get to know the Spirit of God. And if you ask for the Holy Spirit, God's not going to give you a stone or a snake. You ask for the Holy Spirit, He's, he's going to give you the Holy Spirit. You're going to know it's the Holy Spirit because there's so much peace, love, joy. That's like it's unspeakable and full of glory. It's undoubtable. He, he's... he's 
wonderful. Words, words fall cheap when I try to explain how awesome God is. And uh, I had a scripture I was going to read to you. The wells of salvation or something like that. Yeah, just drink from the wells of salvation. Uh, read Isaiah 55 verse 1. Like, you know, even Song of Solomon, you know, uh, 5 verse 1. It's all throughout the Bible. It's all about drinking. You know, if you would have asked me, I would have given you living water. You know, if you wanted to get rid of the pigs and the demons, <laughs> what happened to Jesus when as soon as he stepped onto the land... Like that demon possessed guy, I like, ah, 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 came right up to him, and then he's like, "I know who you are. Have you come to torment us before the time?" And Jesus is like, "What did, what did Jesus say? I forgot." <laughs> oh yeah, what is your name? He said, and they're like, "Our name is Legion," and he's like. Uh, let us go into the pigs. And so Jesus is like, go. And so they went into the pigs. And then the pigs, you know, the pigs, <laughs> must have been a spirit of fear or something because they got all freaked out, went running, and then went and died in the water. Come on, drink that living water. Get rid of the pigs. <laughs> Get rid of those demons hiding in the filthy places. Not that pigs are filthy, don't get offended or anything. I li I'd like to have a pet pig. Like, you know, those little ones that you can buy instead of a dog. Uh, this is I'm talking about in the spirit. Those pigs went uh, suicidal spirits. They died in the water. You got to get in the living water and all those suicidal spirits will die. Spirit of fear will die. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. That, you need strength. You need the strength of God to bash these things off you. They're not even you. The spirit of depression is not you. They were demons. They went into the pigs and the pigs hit the water. You see it? They were in the man. Then went from the man into the pigs. And went, the pigs went into the water and then they died. It says that the demons, when they go out of a man, they seek dry places. They don't like the water. They can't stand the living water. The living water will kill them. <laughs> Ooh, isn't that good? Drink some. Drink some. Drink some living water. You know, just take your bucket and drink from the wells of salvation. Jesus. Jesus is the well of salvation. Jesus is your salvation. Jesus is the rock that Moses was to speak to, to give forth its living water. When Jesus died on the cross, out came blood and water. Blood is the life of God. <laughs> Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you, Jesus said. The blood of Jesus is the life of God. Life always kills death when it's God's life because death is absence of him so and also came out came water living water and you know where it touched you know we all say like, yeah we apply the blood of Jesus on us and that's that's great that's true that's that's we need that without the blood of Jesus we're sin we're in our sin with the blood of Jesus heals us too but there was also water it's the washing of the water of the word I understand that but where did it go it dripped down and it touched the earth it wasn't just for all the sins of mankind it touched the earth there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth when we come to the realization of what the blood of Jesus and the living water purchased. It washed the blood of Jesus paid for everything. I don't have it all figured out, and I, you know, but I do know that when that blood touched the earth, it shook. There was a lot of stuff going on in the spirit realm. That I, you know, here's something else. When Jesus, uh, 
when he first came to the earth, like in heaven, he was the word of God. His name wasn't Jesus. His name was the word of God, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. His name was the word. <laughs> and uh, when he came to earth, he became a man, he became Jesus, or Yeshua, Hamashiach, however you want to pronounce it. I'm not... I just heard other people say, I like to say Hamashiach, I can't even say it again, it's just a fluke, I guess. But that's, that's his name, Jesus. But uh, when he died, rose again, it's like he, he went back to his father, and yeah, in the book of Revelation, it's written on his leg, or on his side, or it says, the Word of God. So yeah, he still has the name Word of God, but there's something different about him now. There's something different. He's not just the Word of God anymore. You see, when He came here to be born as a man, there's a scripture that says that He ever lives to make intercession for us. The man, Christ Jesus. He not only... He became one of us. He humbled Himself become one of his creations and he's still the man Christ Jesus he's still God he's still the word of God but now he's also the man Christ Jesus like that that baffles me that's like me becoming like a flea or a fruit fly I'm still me, but part of my nature is the fruit fly, you know? Bearing good fruit. <laughs> oh, that was bad. <laughs> Whatever, you know what I'm saying, though? You hear what I'm saying? Okay, I hope you do, because yeah, it's powerful. Like, he actually he became a man. I just love him to life. <laughs> Jesus. All right. I'm just gonna let this play until I just I, st I stop feeling the glory. I I'll run out of battery power. I think it only, it lasts for three hours. I'm allowed three hours of recording on this thing. That's why I made it a small little square video so that I can fit more of it on there. Because there's such a heavy impartation of the presence of God. And if you can't feel God, like just forget what I'm saying and just go turn to God. Just turn to God and just turn right into God and just say, God, I want you. God, I want you more than what he's even talking about. I want you more than what those people in the Bible experience, God. I want you, I want you more than Moses, God. I want to have I want to want you more than even Elijah, Elisha, Ezekiel, all the experiences they had. That's great, God, but I want you more because I'm in a new covenant now and I have greater promises. I can get closer. I'm not just walking with you, God. I'm walking in you and you're walking in me. And when I look in the mirror, I want to be able to see your face, God. I want to be able to see and feel your face coming through my face and touching me. Not just me, but by touching those around me. Because you're bigger than me. You're bigger than my atmosphere. You're bigger than my house. You're bigger than the little thing that I think that I call my own life. And yet you love me so much that you would come and step inside of me. And go through all that stuff and become a man for our sake. To redeem us. You didn't have to. Could have wiped us out and started all over. But it's like, no. I love them. Love is the greatest path. <laughs> Love is the only path to get to know God more. You can prophesy, you can all the mysteries, as I said earlier. But yeah, I show you a greater way. Love. It's love. It's the not not the fake love, the human love where you love your puppy and stuff like that. That's, that's still love, but it's I don't know what's that word. There's a it's God love through you. It's like where you're dead and you're willing to give up your own life for people who are wicked. If you're gonna blot them out of the book, God, blot my name out. 
Father, forgive them for they know what they not what they do, but I'll just stand here and die and weep over them. Selfless love, unconditional love. That's the highway. <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather have that than all the power and all the demonstration and the miracles. I'd rather just let God come through me and just blast people with the reality of what He's really like. I like the power and stuff too, don't get me wrong. I love, because that, that's God's love. When He heals people, delivers them, and you know, it's just, oh. But you just, that's just, it's just not enough. I gotta have more of God. Because. You know, that's their portion. They receive the experience. I, I, I feel it feels great. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But what about walking in the garden with God? What about when the day's work is over and it's just you and God? That's what this video is about. God. It's about walking with God. Walking with God in the cool of the day. And in the morning, the first thing you do is God. The last thing at night in your brain or in your heart is like you're meditating on God. I remember last night, I was like, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I just need more of you, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. And as soon as I woke up, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, God, I can't do this day without you. I can't function without you, God. Holy Spirit. You're my best friend. You're my teacher. Teach me how to be like Jesus, God. That's how you need to start your day. Just God. God-centered. Focus everything. You know, love God with your heart your mind, your body, your soul, everything within you, so that you can love your neighbor as yourself. You can't love your neighbor as yourself unless you love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. I've tried. Some of the neighbors are pretty, pretty nasty, you know? <laughs> They'll persecute you and call you the devil and stuff because they're different, because you're different from their theology. Just gotta keep on getting filled with God. He's the source. He's the source of unconditional love, yeah? Hallelujah, man. Nice some water. Just take a God break and just have a drink. Oh, shaka. little thing here. I don't know if you can see that. I got it for two dollars. It makes like lemonade. And it's like, you make like 30 lemonades. And it tastes like really good lemonade. It's really good. <laughs> Maybe one, <laughs> whatever, fire. So, um, the more you drink, the more you'll think with the mind of Christ. The less you'll think with the natural mind. Because the mind of Christ comes through the river. 
mind of Christ is the river of God. It's the Spirit of God teaching you all things. I mean, who can search out the deep things of God? It's the Spirit of God that searches out the deep things of God and reveals them to you and out through your mind, through your spirit mind, the mind of Christ. The natural mind cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit because it's beastly, it's fallen. It's in a fallen state, so you need to renew your mind by the washing of the water of the Word, which is the Word of God, which is Christ Himself. Coming through your mind, through your heart, through your very being, when the mind of Christ is coming manifesting through you, then you can actually interpret the Scriptures by the Spirit of God. You'll have revelation to share with people instead of just having natural information, which is the knowledge of good and evil, and it's not going to bring any transformation of life. Even the good in it is death because it makes you prideful in debates. You'll want to debate people with your knowledge. But when you have revelation knowledge, it's, 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 it's humbling because you have this... You have revelation from God and you want to share it with people so that they can be transformed into the image of God. That's your purpose. It's not to, to be all puffed up with the information that you have. It's to bring transformation. That's what the mind of Christ does. Where my water go? So, just like, yeah. You gotta be so spiritually minded that the people, you know, you'll be earthly good to people, you know? You know, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Because if you set your affections on things above, you'll see the earth through those through those affections of heaven. <laughs> you'll see the earth through the eyes of heaven. If you set your affections on things above and not on the earth, when you see the earth, you'll have the affections of heaven to manifest into the earth. You don't have to try to conjure anything up and make anything up. Just drink, drink, like you know, living water. Drink the living water and it will bring mental clarity to you so you can actually, through your mind, God will come. Through your heart, God will come. Through your hands, God will touch. Through your ears, you know, God will speak to your, well, your ears. Oh, oh. Jesus said this, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. That's not these ears, okay? Because those ears hear what the natural is saying. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. The ears to hear is your spirit, man. Your spirit ears, or even your heart. Circumcise your heart, you know? Because God is far from the proud. Because the proud have hardened their heart. And He's near to the humble. The humble are dependent upon God. You know, a humble man and a proud... Okay, here's a humble and a prideful man. I don't know how to, which way to put it, but... A humble man depends upon the power of God to manifest. A prideful man sees that humble man is prideful. Because they see them walking in power and authority, and they're like, well, why can't I walk in that? I can blah, 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 blah. And then they compare themselves, or look at themselves. And then that, but the other man, the humble man, is looking at God. And the other man who wants to have that power is puffed up in pride, so he'll try to bring in competition. Just like the sons of Korah, I believe, when the 250 uh, came against Moses, Moses decked it, and he fell on his face before God. And uh, they were saying, like, you brought us out here, blah, 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 we're not going to listen to you, blah, 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 blah. Because um, the humble will always look like pride. Humility looks like pride to a carnal mind. All right? Put it that way. Humility looks like pride to a carnal mind. They will fight you when you depend on God. And so... Just depend on God. And you have to get so dead to yourself that you can actually release forgiveness to them. Because, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're saying. They don't know what they're doing. And they dug their own grave. Basically, the earth opened up, swallowed them all alive. Boom. Dead. The earth didn't swallow up Moses. He actually had to go up into a mountain or something. And God had to kill him because he had so much glory on him. Or whatever happened. I don't know what happened. The Bible doesn't really say. I don't have any revelation on that. <laughs> so, whatever. You know? Like, just, you know, shaka. <laughs> Do you guys feel that? I don't know if you guys can feel it. I just, I keep getting waves of glory. Waves of the Holy Spirit. Father, just whoa, blast them all. <sighs> 
fill them, God. Fill them with the Holy Spirit and power. Even if they don't get anything from this video, let them get an impartation of your spirit. Let them get it. Let them feel the presence of God and the electricity and the power. You know, the presence, the love, the peace, the joy. You know, what else is there to do in life but enjoy God? Get so distracted by all the little, you know, things of this world. Ah. Oh. It just feels so liberating to stand here and just to be free. Be the person that God's created me to be. I, I can be goofy, I can be wise, whatever, I can be like whatever, whatever he wants to choose to do through me. And it's the same with you. Like at first, whatever, fire in your life. Man. I notice I copy a lot of people that I listen to. Okay, those mannerisms they just come through me. And it's just that's just that comes naturally. But the more time you spend with Jesus, his mannerisms will come through you. So you can always tell when someone's been hanging around somebody, because they'll have their mannerisms. You know. Yeah, it's true. You can tell who's been with the Father because the the they are terrifying, <laughs> but it's so powerful you just want to stay for three days and listen to them. Kind of like Jesus. How did Jesus keep these crowds for three days? I could barely make a video for two hours, like, and I'm just like worn out. These crowds were there for three days listening to Jesus because he had so much life and spirit coming out of him that it fed them. But they also needed natural food too, so. You know, I'm not there yet, you know. A lot, a lot of people probably already stopped the video and just moved on to find something better. <laughs> I don't care. I'm I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm staying in the whack. Like, I'm staying in the Holy Ghost. I'm, and I just, I like, I want to, I'll probably just play it till the battery dies. Like, just because I feel God. I just don't even want this to lift. I want to sit in this all day. Holy Ghost, shut up. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's so many things that I sort of want to talk about, but I don't even really want to talk about them. Does that make sense? Oh, shut up, kind of a kid. time in the presence of God. <laughs> Fire. Fill them. Fill them up, God. Fill them up. Fill them up. Overflowing. It can be so overflowing that they fill their neighborhood with the presence and glory of God. He said, as surely as I live, the whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory. Revelation knowledge releases the glory if you can step out in faith with it. Holy Spirit. It's like you don't even really... When you care what God thinks more than what man thinks, the only enemy left is like the fear of death. And when you realize that you've already died, and your, your life is already here with Christ and God, you can do what you want in the kingdom. You can live as a spirit. He that is born of the spirit is Nicodemus. He is spirit. Nicodemus is trying to figure it out with his natural mind. He was like, how can a... How can uh how do you get back into your mother's womb like you know in the natural? <laughs> no, you gotta get born of the spirit. And once you're spirit, you can have spiritual thoughts and, and translate spiritual words into, you know, little word capsules. And just release it. <laughs> yeah. God, I thank you for all the people who disciple me. You know who they are, God. I ask you just to pour some living water on them all. And it's not even them. It's you coming through them. I just thank you for them, Father, right now. In Jesus' name. I ask you to send even more. 
I just want more of you, God. More of you, more of you. In whichever form, fashion, or way you come, I just want more of you. I want to have. I want to be so God possessed that I'm so out of control. Like I'm in the. I'm like that. That demon possessed guy, just screaming and the, you know, cutting himself. But I'll be like in public. God is here. Laying hands on people. Fire. You know. Just release to the power of God. So possessed by God that I'm willing to go to the cross for Him because He loves you. That's what I want. <laughs> I'm so possessed by God that I just don't really care what people think. I don't really care if I get thrown in jail. I'll just release the glory there. There's no cameras to record it, but at least there's the glory. <laughs> or maybe they will record it on the surveillance so they can, like, you know, have their coffee and chips. I'm like, whoa, that person's out of it. He's out of this world. Shaka. Jesus. Ugh. I posted like years ago or something like that. It feels like a few millenniums ago. I put on my Facebook, you're not of this world, so quit pretending like you are. <laughs> you're not of this world. You're in this world to be who you are. And that's dead. <laughs> You're like a zombie with Christ as the you know the Holy Ghost has just got your body releasing and doing what he wants to do. Yeah, you're not of this world, but you're in it. Because God planted you here to cleanse it, cleanse the atmosphere, to fill it with the glory of God. Surely as I live, saith the Lord. It's the scripture. How is he gonna do it? He's gonna use his body, the body of Christ. Christ is the Spirit of God. He says, In the last days, I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your old men and old dream dreams and visions. You know, stuff like that. How is He going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh? Through His body. You're the hands, <laughs> you're the feet, He's the head, you know. He's like, you know, the Son of Man has nowhere to, you know, to lay His head. That's what it's it was like, not just the, it's his headship, you know, his authority. And he placed his authority on the body of Christ, which is you. We're the body, he's the head. All authority. So he's, he's the one who turns the body whichever way it wants to go. So we just kind of yield. We're just like this yielding body. And if he wants to like swing and take out a giant, that's cool. Let's do that. That's what God's into, you know, killing giants. Who wants to fling some stones? Let's do that. Because that's what God wants to do. He's the head, we're the body, and He's going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh through His body. It's going to be as the days of Noah. What was it? It was the clouds, right, that poured out the rain from deep within and above. You know, above, He's going to pour out His Spirit from heaven. And deep within, from the body of Christ, pour like through the, His body of Christ. Don't you know that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost? The hidden parable uh, of this is in Ezekiel, I think 37 or 47 or one of those two. It's where the rivers, the waters were flowing. As far as those waters would flow, it brought healing, pouring out His Spirit. Those, that river of life just brought healing wherever it went. Out of the temple. And like you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. So just keep that door open. Fling wide you have in the gates. Of the, or even went, went from underneath it or something like that. Just let the, just let the whole purpose of this is just to let God flow through you. And don't be intimidated by the opinions of men. <laughs> opinions of men are worthless. If there's no glory on it. Even someone who says, Thus saith the Lord, blah, 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 blah. 
There's no spare life on it. That was thus saith the soul. <laughs> so I just, you know, put it on a shelf. Sometimes you can rebuke them or whatever. I usually just, uh, I don't say anything. I'll just like put it on a shelf. Sometimes there's a grace for me to just mess with them. See this tattoo? Some guy came up to me one time. I was a brand new believer back then. I, had, I didn't have a lick of wisdom or understanding or anything. I just knew God. I love God. He goes, thus saith the Lord, that tattoo is an abomination. And uh, blah, 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 and you're going to hell or something like that. I don't even remember what it was. And I, I just looked at the guy. I could see the demon in him. So I'm like... Praise the Lord. The Lord has sent you to give me $1,200 to remove the tattoo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for sending this man to give me like $1,200 because that's how much it costs to get rid of that tattoo. You wouldn't send someone to condemn me. You always send the answer. And that guy's like, no, 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 no. So I was just, <laughs> I was messing with him and whatever. I, there was a grace for that. And then right after that, like, I got a word of knowledge for somebody's ear and stuff like that. It's funny. And I prayed for them. I don't even know if they got healed or not. I was just a baby. I was just... I don't even know if it was a word of knowledge. I just, my ear hurts. You know, maybe it was my ear was hurting from the guy just babbling this nonsense into my ear. <laughs> so, hey, man, I'm learning. I'm always learning. You know, <laughs> and I'm having fun with it. Like, I'm having fun learning. Even if, like, it wasn't a word of knowledge, at least I tried and I stepped out. If someone need prayer for their hearing, I feel like someone might be God. And then it was like some girl I prayed for her ear, and I don't even know if she got healed or not, but whatever. Another time I was kneeling down, and I was like, man, I feel a great pain in my knee. My someone must need prayer in their in their knee. So I like I, I stood up, and uh, I said, does somebody's here uh, needs healing in their knee? Put your hand up, and I'm gonna pray for you. And nobody put their hand up, and I realized it's just my, my knee was on my guitar patch cord, and that's why it was hurting so much. So, like, pfft, uh, you'll screw up. Like, you know, but I would rather screw up trying than never try and be, like, an absolute failure for never trying and stepping out in faith. I'm so glad I learned from that. It's, who cares? <laughs> so, I, man, I was just asking someone if they needed prayer for their knee, and it was me. So maybe I should have got someone to pray for me. I don't know, whatever. But when you become all prideful and stuff like that, you won't even step out or, or fearful or something. You won't step out. I have other testimonies that were actually, you know, people actually, you know, counter God, but whatever. The point is, like, it's fun. Be like a child. Don't think you'll ever understand everything. Moses in heaven right now, he knows like a billion times more than you because he's been in heaven just having revelation after revelation of who God is God just keeps unlayering himself unlayering himself to Moses like more layers of God you know redeemer you know just all these love unconditional love merciful mighty man of war all these different layers of God just bam it's hitting Moses and the living creatures and just layer after layer of revelation after revelation and then we think we know something because we had a vision 20 years ago. Whew. You got I would rather know, know God now. <laughs> and like today. Hold on a sec. I think my wife just stepped. Okay. Come on, it must be the neighbors or something. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's like it's okay to step out and screw up. It's just like, you know, or you just say like, I'm just taking a chance here. I feel pain in my knee. <laughs> I don't know if this is a word of knowledge, but if someone here need prayer in their knee, maybe someone will need prayer for their knee. It wasn't even a word of knowledge, but you get to pray for them and they do get healed. You know, but who cares? You know, that's, <laughs> I'm still learning. And I ever want to be learning and coming into the truth. Some of them are ever learning, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth because they're learning by the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life is true experience in the manifest presence of God. Life. God's spirit is life. He said, my words are spirit and they are. So there's, there's like a substance that comes with that. 
the spirit substance in the words were the life to break anything of darkness off. Yeah, I love Jesus' words. Oh, I'm really thirsty. Guys, I gotta lay off the chips and the sunflower seeds. I mean, yeah, I know. I gotta, whatever. That's not even kingdom stuff, whatever. <laughs> oh, I think it's time for a drink break. I hope you guys are actually receiving the presence of God or else I don't want to be filling your brains with the knowledge of good and evil because that would be terrible. The worst thing you could do is just receive a bunch of information without the spirit of impartation coming into those words and then you go out and you go and babble to other people your prideful opinion because you think you know something when you didn't even experience it yourself. There's spirit life. Spirit brings life. Spirit brings life. The spirit of God brings life to the words. The dead letter. You know, the letter apart from the spirit is death. But the spirit of God in the letter brings life because it's the words of Jesus Christ with the spirit of God in it. And it brings life. Yeah. So just tune into him. Tune into Jesus. Tune into the author and the finisher of your faith. Tune into the Holy Ghost. Tune into the Father. Father of lights. Just receive him. Let him fill you right now. Let's just get, let's come on, waves of glory. We go from glory to glory. We've already experienced one level of glory. I don't know if you've experienced, I have. I've been feeling that glory as I've been talking more. But I feel like there's another wave coming. So God, just bring that other wave. Bring more waves of glory, God. Deeper and deeper still. Lower and lower still. The lower we go, the higher we get. The lower we go, the higher we get in you. The deeper we go into your heart, the more we can see through the pitch, like through the lens of reality. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. So God's heart, if you can see through God's heart, you're seeing through purity. God, give us eyes to see purity. Just like Elisha or Elijah or whatever his name he said, we pray for his, his servant Gehazi. God, I just pray for everyone listening to this right now, including myself. God, open our eyes to see that there are more with us than there are with them. There are more with us. Show us the ones with us. But more than all that, show us the one within us. We want to see Jesus. We want to see the Holy Spirit, God. We want to see the Father. We want to see that burning. We want to experience a baptism of fire and burning. For those who cannot handle the baptism of fire, there will be grace for you to receive the baptism of water. <laughs> it's true. I saw it in the Bible the other day. <laughs> there is. There is grace for you and me. God, I ask right now in Jesus' name, baptize us. Baptize us in that living water, God. Oh, baptize us, Holy Ghost. Shatake. Baptism. Serious? Okay. I'm going to tell you something that it's totally humbling for me. And I'm going to probably lose all, all, all 15 of my viewers. <laughs> like, I care. <laughs> but this is a true story. I had a stepper, like, you know those girly things? <laughs> where you, you step on it and you have these rubber bands, you do it your biceps. I don't know if you can see me, but you kind of like, you do these steppy things on the stepper. And I did 333 steps, and I stopped, and I looked at it like, oh, I know what that means. That means call upon God. God wants my attention right now. So I'm like, oh, but I want to keep on doing my stepper thingy. And so I, I finally I said, yeah, okay, I'll stop. I stopped the stepper, and I just went into my weight room. You can tell I didn't, I didn't go there to lift weights. It didn't work. So, but I did have a weight room back then. And then as I, I walk into the weight room, I'm like, okay, God, what is it? You know, what's going on? 
And I thought I was gonna have like, you know, this big open vision and the angels showing up or, you know, whatever. Cause like, you know, it's God, he's showing me stuff. This is, this is, 333 is Jeremiah 33 verse three to me. It's like, call upon me and I'm gonna show you things that you do not know, okay? So, so I went into my weight room and I, I locked the door. And, uh, and I'm like, God, what is it? Like, I'm praying in tongues, nothing, not one drop of anointing, nothing. I'm like, God, I don't get it. Open up the Bible, I'm reading the Bible, nothing. So I'm like, God, what? I'm here. Uh, I feel like He called me into prayer. You know, like, what is it? And then, um, so I'm closing my eyes and I just get silent before the Lord. I'm listening for Him. I'm listening. I'm looking for visions. I'm listening in my spirit. I'm just I'm looking for anything where any means of communication, any feeling in my body, uh, a jolt in my soul, anything like a twitch of the eyebrow, whatever. It's whatever God way God wants to speak to, I'm just still. And I'm like I got my my elbows are on you know the weight bench you know the where you do the bench press my elbows are on there and I got them on my knees and back then I had this puppy dog who used to always he would jump on my lap and uh, his name is Kuma he's still alive but uh, his name is Kuma and uh, and he would always I raised him from a pup first time I saw him, I just gave him this little pet he's just tiny little puppy got him when he was three months old and and he was, he was going, and then, and then, like when you stop petting him, I'm like, oh, that's so cute. And then, uh, so he go, and then I pet him some more, and then I'll just stop to see if he'll do that. He'll go, you know, puppy dogs. And then I pet him some more. I'm like, oh, it was so cute. And then it progressed. Like he would not stop doing that. It was this trademark thing that he would do. And then he would look up to me, he would come up to me, I'd be sitting at the table eating. And uh, it's funny, this is an amazing dog. He'd come up to me, he'd go, ah, ah, and then um, I'm like, okay. And then he would jump on my lap. It wasn't the food, he wanted to sit on my lap. I'm like, okay, and I'd pet him. He wanted that petting, he wanted that affection. And so, as I'm on my knees, silent before the Lord, I hear, ah, ah. what? Okay, hold on, that can't be the Lord. Let's go there. So I'm like, God, I'm here. Please speak to me. And then I hear my dog again. Ah, ah. What is this? And so I'm like, man, am I like, I'm like this dog? Like I'll do anything for the presence of God. Am I willing to humble myself for a crumb? So you know what I did? I was on my knees like this, nothing else, reading the Bible, speaking in tongues, nothing was working. All I heard was my dog whimpering. So I, I said to God, this is what I said to God. I said, ah, ah. <laughs> I began to weep. The presence of God flooded me. It was like God was just loving me. He's like, yes, that's all I want, son. I just want you to want me. I just want to spend time with you. It's not about visions. It's not about dreams. It's not about all these things. I just want you. And it was like, I was, I was so in awe. It's that I, it was something so foolish, so humbling. Then I sat there and I, I just wept in the presence of God. Because you came and you just wanted to be with me. You didn't want to share some profound message with me. He just wanted me there in his presence. Humble. Humbled in his presence. I'll do anything for you, God. I'll do anything to be in your manifest presence. loved on me for the longest time and then I heard this someone was at the door trying to they're, hey Chris uh, I didn't even speak I just sat there like this crying, weeping in the presence of God and they're Chris, Chris 
presence of God is worth more than the duties of man. The presence of God is worth more than all the duties of man. Mary and Martha, Mary, you know, sat at his feet, listening to his words. Martha's running around, stressed out. I think I got that right. Martha is like going to Jesus, like, you know, aren't you gonna tell her to help me? You know, so I need help. I'm doing all this stuff for you, Jesus. And Jesus is like, Mary has chosen the best part and will not be taken away from her. What's the best part? you can do for Jesus can you even hear him do you even want him the best part is just loving him and letting him love you all the ministry and stuff is secondary it's the overflow of your of your heart with God The best part is to be able to sit, be still, and know that He is God. And that you don't have to do all that stuff. I've heard teachings where like Mary and Martha are both necessary. What if, what if we were just all Marys and we all just sat at Jesus' feet and manifested the presence of God because we heard? What if everybody, every believer manifested the presence of God? People would be saved. Because they're like, whoa, what is going on? What's this presence? What is this? Oh, let me tell you what he told me. She chose the best part. The best part is to hear Him. The best part is to receive Him. The best part is the calling in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. And Jesus called His 12 unto Him. Or whatever the scripture was. The best part is Him. He does the works. Jesus does the works. The Holy Spirit does the works. The Father does the work. God does the works. Through a yielded vessel. I mean, that's the best part. Why would why would you want to go after the le- the, le- the lesser part <laughs> where there's stress, anxiety, frustration? Let's go for the best part. Let's just like stop everything and go to God and get some blueprints like Jesus did, you know? Amen. That's my well, that's her story and I'm sticking to it. You know, Mary chose the best part of the lamb. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like Martha got stuck with the bones or something, you know? <laughs> Still good. You know, just a little bit of meat on there, but a little crunchy. You don't get as much. You got to work harder for it. Whereas Mary, she's... Oh, yeah. Here, Martha. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, man. It's true, though. It's true. You got to do your natural duties and stuff like that. That's true. Yeah. But... <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, Jesus, can you please help me explain this? Because I don't even know if I'm doing a good job or not. <laughs> I don't care, whatever. They probably, half the people probably stopped the video because it was so long. They just like, whatever, I got things to do. and I gotta, I gotta go to do my ministry. <laughs> Do, people got stuff to do. You know, I right now the only thing I got to do that's important is is to spend time with God. You know, and uh, oh, my wife is here. I think my wife is here. Hold on a second. Yo, see, how's it feeling here? Oh, I'm recording right now. You've been blasted. I'm totally, we're, I'm, I'm already on like 2 hours and 11 minutes on this video, we're so drunk. With beer? With beer? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, nice to see you. Mm. Welcome home. Oh, Jesus. I almost stayed in the car because it was it's so still thick recording. here. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's really thick in here too, we're just, uh, we're talking about uh, drinking and stuff like that, mm. yeah. So, um. I totally forgot what I was talking about. You know what? I'm gonna go spend some time with my wife. So, unless you got uh, something better to do, um, let's choose the best part. All right. Peace out.